After months of leaks, the Google Pixel 6 and 6 Pro are finally official. What's up guys, Super Saf here. Let's go ahead, get these unboxed, see what they have to offer, and also put them side by side, compare them to see which one might be right for you. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Check out the link in the description for a special offer. So the unboxing experience is identical with both devices. You get the Pixel 6s, some paperwork with a SIM card tool, a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable, a USB Type-A to USB Type-C converter, and unfortunately, there is no charger included out of the box. This is something that we were expecting and it has become a trend, unfortunately. And here we are, the Google Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. Now, obviously the design is no surprise. Google have officially revealed it themselves months ago, but it's nice to see these in hand. I do think they look better in person compared to the renders. So we've got this pretty unique design with this strip over here for the camera module. I'm sure there's gonna be lots of memes around this, but I do like it. I think it looks very unique. And we've got this uh, glossy back on both devices. I'm generally not a fan of uh, a glossy back. I would have preferred a matte finish. So they both do attract quite a lot of fingerprints. We have a metal frame, but for the Pixel 6, it's got a matte finish, whereas we've got a glossy finish on the Pixel 6 Pro. Again, I do prefer the matte finish. It just gives it a bit more grip as well, and it looks a lot better in my opinion. And the edging around the camera module is also matte on the Pixel 6 compared to the glossy on the Pixel 6 Pro. So right away, I would consider a case or a skin. You can always pick up a grip case or a skin from our channel sponsor, Dbrand. They've got lots of different options for the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. And with the grip cases, you're not just stuck with one style. You can always mix it up and just change the skin which is actually on the grip case. I'll leave a link to Dbrand down in the description below. Now both devices are IP68 water and dust resistant, which is great. But then we do start seeing some differences. So the back glass, we've got Gorilla Glass 6 on the Pixel 6. The 6 Pro has Gorilla Glass Victus, which is more durable. It's the newer version. And of course, there's also the size differences. So although both devices are pretty much the same thickness, the Pixel 6 Pro is slightly taller and slightly wider. However, there's really not much difference in terms of the weight. The Pixel 6 Pro is just a few grams heavier compared to the Pixel 6. Now switching over to the front, we've got much bigger differences. So the screen size, the Pixel 6 Pro has a larger 6.7 inch display versus the 6.4 inch display. You'll also notice that the Pixel 6 Pro does have smaller bezels compared to the Pixel 6 and there's a curved display on the Pixel 6 Pro, whereas we've got a flat display on the Pixel 6. Punch out for the selfie camera. Both devices are using OLED technology. However, the Pixel 6 Pro is superior. The Pixel 6 comes with a full HD plus resolution, whereas the Pixel 6 Pro has a quad HD plus resolution. So we're getting a higher pixel density, which means details are sharper. But more importantly, the Pixel 6 has a 90 Hertz refresh rate, whereas the Pixel 6 Pro can go all the way up to 120 Hertz, making things a lot smoother. Now 90 Hertz is still good. 120 Hertz is just gonna be better when you're scrolling through your social media feeds, when you're gaming. And the Pixel 6 Pro also uses LTPO technology, which the Pixel 6 does not. What does that mean? Well, on the Pixel 6, you're just gonna be able to switch between 60 and 90 Hertz, which means even when you have something static like this, it's still refreshing 60 times a second, which uh, can have an impact on battery life. The Pixel 6 Pro, however, thanks to the LTPO technology, can go all the way down to just 10 hertz. So when we've got something static here, then it's only gonna be refreshing 10 times a second rather than 60 or 120 times a second. Now the front displays both have Gorilla Glass Victus and we do have an in-display fingerprint scanner on both devices, which works really well. Now before we move on to talking about the cameras, a quick thanks to our sponsor for this video, NordVPN. So you guys know that the Google Pixel 6 and 6 Pro have been some of the most leaked devices of recent times. And if you wanna make sure that your personal information isn't leaked and tracked by your internet service provider and other third parties, then you're gonna to want to check out NordVPN. With NordVPN, it's as easy as a tap of a button to connect you to the internet via a remote private server 
on any of your devices, keeping your online data private. This also means that you can get access to content that may not be available in your country. This is something that I use all the time. Lots of programs and movies are available in the US first before the UK. I can just log into NordVPN, change my location to the United States and have access to so much more quality content. Go to nordvpn.com forward slash superset to get 73% off the two year plan with four additional months for free. That is less than the cost of a cup of coffee each month. And with NordVPN's 30 day risk free money back guarantee, you really have nothing to lose. Go ahead, try it out. Right now let's move over to the cameras. So Google Pixel devices have been known for the cameras and the combination of hardware and software for some time. One of the things that we have had, however, on Google Pixel devices is that the camera hardware really hasn't been changed over the past few years. That is different this year, and we've got a brand new 50 megapixel primary camera sensor, and this can give you around 150% more light compared to what we had on the Pixel 5. And we have the exact same primary camera on both the Pixel 6 as well as the 6 Pro, the ultra wide camera is also the same on both devices, 12 megapixels with a 114 degree angle of view. However, the Pixel 6 Pro does get an additional camera. This is 48 megapixels, uses periscope zoom technology and can give you up to four times optical zoom. Now, this is nowhere near the 10 times optical zoom that we get on the S21 Ultra, for example. That is also using periscope zoom technology. But of course, guys, I'm going to be doing some super SAS style camera comparisons of the Pixel 6 Pro versus the competition. So definitely let me know in the comments below which device you'd like me to compare it to first. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon because you're really not going to want to miss it. Google has also introduced some new software features along with the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, which I can't show you as yet. But we've got things like the Magic Eraser, which is going to let you get rid of people in the background that are photobombing your shots, as well as Face Unblur, which is going to try to restore faces in images where there might be some motion on faces. For video, both devices can now film up to 4K 60 frames a second. And we've also got 4K HDR plus video recording. Now, Pixel devices traditionally have not had the best video, unfortunately, although they take great images. So I'm really excited to test these out. Stay tuned. Now, we do have some differences for the front facing cameras. The Pixel 6 has an 8 megapixel front facing camera. The Pixel 6 Pro has around an 11 megapixel front facing camera. You've also got the option to take wider angle selfies around 94 degrees on the Pixel 6 Pro. And the Pixel 6 Pro can also record at 4K up to 30 frames a second from the front facing camera. On the Pixel 6, you still only have 1080p up to 30 frames a second, unfortunately. Okay, now let's talk about performance. So one of the newest things that we've got this year is the fact that Google are using a custom chip. So traditionally, we'll have a Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset, but Google is using their own Tensor chipset. Now with this, it seems like Google's going to be able to optimize the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro to make the most of the hardware along with the software. We've also got the dedicated Titan M2 chip for increased security and the Pixel 6 has eight gigabytes of RAM. The Pixel 6 Pro has 12 gigabytes of RAM. So you're gonna get better multitasking on the Pixel 6 Pro. For storage, both are using UFS 3.1 storage and they are available in 128 or 256 gigabyte options. Right, for software, being Pixel devices, they do come with a clean version of Android from Google themselves and they will be coming with the latest out of the box, Android 12. But I'd say the most important news here is the fact that Google is promising a minimum of five years of updates with the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, which is a very long time. And I think they'll be able to do this thanks to the fact that they've got their custom chipset along with the software. So they'll be able to support the hardware with their software for much longer. Now with Android 12, there's already been lots of videos that you may have already seen. So I'm not gonna cover Android 12 in too much detail. We'll hold that for the full review. Now we've got stereo speakers on both devices. There's one in the earpiece and then we've got bottom firing. And although both devices have support for 5G, the Pixel 6 Pro 
does have ultra wideband technology, which is gonna help it better connect with other devices that are compatible. Right, batteries. So the Pixel 6 has roughly around a 4,600 milliamp hour battery. The Pixel 6 Pro has a larger 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So the Pixel 6 Pro, along with the LTPO technology and the larger battery size, should give you better battery life. I'll cover the full battery usage in my full review. And both devices do support fast charging. Charger, of course, is not included out of the box. It's a 30 watt charger that you're gonna have to buy separately. The Pixel 6 Pro will charge faster, however. You can go from zero to 50% in around 30 minutes. Whereas on the Pixel 6, you can only go to around 30% in 30 minutes. Both devices also support Qi wireless charging. The Pixel 6 Pro can charge slightly faster at 23 watts compared to 21 watts. Now these higher speeds for wireless charging are specific to the Google Pixel Stand Gen 2, which you're gonna have to buy separately. If you use a standard Qi wireless charger, then you'll only be able to get a maximum of 12 watts of wireless charging. This is something that I'm not too keen on. I don't like proprietary hardware for higher charging speeds. I mean, there's lots of really good wireless chargers out there which do charge faster, so I would have liked to have the flexibility. And we've also got battery share. This is where you'll be able to charge other devices on the back of the Pixels wirelessly. So say you've got some Pixel Buds, you can just pop them at the back. Something that I don't use too much, but it's always nice to have when you need it. Right now, let's talk about pricing. So the Pixel 6 in the UK is gonna be starting at around 600 pounds. The Pixel 6 Pro will be starting at around 850 pounds. So you will be paying a decent amount more, around 50, 55% more for the Pixel 6 Pro compared to the Pixel 6. What are you getting for that additional money? Well, you're getting that better display with the higher refresh rate, the higher resolution. You're getting the bigger battery. You're getting that additional telephoto camera with four times optical zoom. You're getting the better front facing camera and you're getting the additional RAM for better multitasking. Now, personally, I'm super interested in the Pixel 6 Pro in particular. I think the price of 850 pounds is quite competitive. When you look at some of the other devices available in the market right now, we are looking at a flagship price of around 900 pounds and above. But most importantly, I'm very interested to see what the cameras are like compared to some other devices out there. If you wanna see the Super SaaS style camera comparisons first, once again, a reminder, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. Those will be coming very, very soon. I'm working on them as we speak. And also let me know down in the comments below what you think of the Google Pixel 6 and 6 Pro and which devices you'd like me to compare them to. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then do smash that like button for me. If you wanna see some related coverage, then I have done some comparisons with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which I'm gonna link in the cards here. Thanks to our sponsor, NordVPN. Don't forget to check out the offer in the description. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on SuperSaf TV, and I'll see you next time.